Life imprisonment is any sentence of imprisonment for a crime under which convicted people are to remain in prison for the rest of their natural lives or indefinitely until pardoned, paroled, or otherwise commuted to a fixed term. So in this video, we are going to tell you about the five craziest convict reactions to a life sentence. The video is going to be amazing so make sure you stick to the end. Before starting the video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. Number 5. Jaleel Smith After denying a man's request to withdraw his guilty plea in a three-year-old murder case, a Hamilton County judge sentenced him to life in prison. Jaleel Smith Riley pleaded guilty on August 11 to aggravated murder and attempted murder but decided to withdraw his plea against the advice of his attorneys. Hamilton County Common Pleas Judge Charles Kubicki rejected Smith Riley's change of heart and sentenced him to life in prison without the possibility of parole. After receiving his sentence, Smith Riley collapsed to the floor of Kubicki's courtroom. Police pulled Smith Riley to his feet and he then interrupted Kubicki. So what does he get? said Smith Riley, who was also sentenced to a consecutive prison term of 11 years for a related attempted murder charge. It was unclear who Smith Riley was referencing in the outburst. Number 4. Diana Lovejoy A Carlsbad woman and her gun instructor were handed lengthy prison sentences for what authorities said was a botched plot to kill the woman's estranged husband, who was shot but survived. Superior Court Judge Sim von Kalinowski sentenced Diana Lovejoy to 26 years to life in prison for her conviction late last year of conspiracy to commit murder, as well as attempted murder. Weldon McDavid Jr. received 50 years to life in prison because he was the one who pulled the trigger and shot the victim on a dark, dirt path in Carlsbad. The victim, Greg Mulvihill, survived. The shooting happened in September, as Lovejoy and Mulvey Hill were wrapping up a contentious divorce and bitter custody battle over their son. Deputy District Attorney Jody Breton argued that Lovejoy manipulated McDavid into the shooting with false tales of abuse. Number 3. Tashiana Fusari Convicted of first-degree murder for starving her baby to death, a Kent County mother stayed silent in the moments before a judge sentenced her to life in prison. Tashiana Fusari, 31, declined comment when given the chance Wednesday, November 17 before Judge Paul Denenfeld. Wednesday's life sentence comes after Fusari backed out of an earlier plea to second-degree murder that called for a minimum of 25 years in prison. Denenfeld allowed her to withdraw the plea in 2020 after she brought up a duress defense, essentially claiming her husband beat and abused her. The physical and mental abuse made her unable to properly care for the baby, Fusari and her attorneys claimed. Number 2. Ryan Stone The family of the man who led police on a dangerous car chase that spanned more than 60 miles and critically injured a state trooper says he is a compassionate person who feels remorse for his actions. But recordings of conversations played during Ryan Stone's sentencing hearing Friday revealed a man who bragged about making international news and belittled the victims in his case. Stone was sentenced to 160 years in prison. He will likely become eligible for parole after 75 years, prosecutors said. A Douglas County jury convicted Stone of 18 charges in April, including attempted manslaughter, first-degree assault, and child abuse. During the pursuit in March 2014, Stone reached speeds of 100 miles per hour while he raced over his shoulders and sped toward oncoming traffic. Number 1. Esteban Carpio Esteban Carpio stabbed 8 four-year-old Madeline Gatta with a knife when he attempted to steal her handbag. Suspecting Carpio had assault, the Providence police brought him to headquarters. He was brought without handcuffs to a conference room, where he was interviewed by debt. James Allen, who openly wore his handgun on his hip. At the outset Carpio gave a false name, denied that he had ever been arrested in his life, and said that he had done nothing wrong when debt. Allen admonished Carpio that he knew his real identity and was aware of his lengthy arrest record. Carpio became agitated and asked debt. Timothy McGann, who was also in the conference room, for some water. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe and we will be back soon with another video.